Welcome back to another video. This week I want to give you an idea of how I go about creating a list. This is going to be a semi-competitive, speed freaks based list. So for that we're going to be using a battalion in order to refund all our CPs. So the benefit of running a battalion right now is it will refund all three CP, which you can use to buy yourself custom jobs on all your vehicles, which you're going to want because currently orc buggies are strong, but when they are given the ability to take custom jobs, they are even stronger. For this list, I will be running Evil Sons, but before we can get to that, let's make sure that we have this currently set to 12 CP at 2000 point game, and we have Evil Sons clicked as our clan. As you can see, Battlescribe is a phenomenal app as it contains all the information that you'll need in order to make a list. So let's go to the most populated section of this list building, which is our HQ selection. Now, there are many fantastic choices for an aspiring war boss. However, currently you will see most competitive lists running a war boss on Warbike. I feel currently that this is definitely the most uh, competitive and well-rounded option for an HQ because he is an absolute rocket. You send him into something, he will kill it as long as he is juiced up with the uh, Kill a Claw, the biggest boss stratagem, and also having either Might is Right for an additional attack and plus one strength or Brutal Becoming. However, I want to highlight the Death Kill of Wartrike as I feel like it's more redundant when GW makes the codex change to have him ready because they tend to want to push their main model line and not Forge World, I find personally. So we're going to make him our war boss. We are also going to have, as part of this uh, detachment, the other weird boy. Ignore me here, deleting him by accident. And so we are going to make our Death Killer Wartrike our war boss. He's going to be the one leading our posse. But uh, when it comes to his like warlord trait, we're going to end up going with uh, Brutal But Cunning. Because what this ends up doing is producing an additional damage on each uh, dice roll. Since he has a D3 damage weapon, it just means he can reliably kill a marine without uh, an apothecary, which is important. And I find Might is Right is good because it makes him strength 8. However, the plus 1 attack just nets less damage in general. Especially when you note that his weapon and warlord trait result in rerolling all wounds and hits. So now we're on to our troop section. We're going to be taking 10-man squad of boys. I prefer shooter boys, but you can run choppas as there's no point difference. Seeing as we're running Evil Suns here, they can advance and pop off some loud banging noises with those shooters. We're going to put a claw on each of the knobs in order to just give them that little bit of teeth when it comes to close combat. Say they do have to get into gay engagement range, they can at least, you know, put out a decent amount of damage with that uh, minus 3 D3 damage power claw. And the way the fists went, I think we'll see something similar with claws. We'll probably remain at minus 3 damage. Um, AP, but will end up probably becoming damage too when the codex is released. So now we're on to our best part of this, which is selecting our fast attacks. We're going to take all the buggies we can, including two custom Busta Blasts because they're effective at hunting marines who are without an apothecary. They're a good backline unit for later on in the game. The main backbone will be a squad of uh, Mega Trap Scrap Jets. You can go with the Nose Drill corkscrew upgrade if you want it allows them to fight twice after they have uh so after they've completed their first round of combat they can pile in and fight again which is really effective especially if you're running death skulls but since i am not running death skulls i will be opting out of using this one in order to just have that extra cp for when the time comes or who knows you could always use it to uh give the death kill war trike gorks roar so we are on to now looking at uh, potential heavy weapon supports. I think currently in the Codex, our best option is the smash -a guns However, a bunch of uh, Death Dreads with the, I think it's shiny bits for the plus one ballistic skill and four mega guns is pretty scary because they pump out a ton of high AP, high damage shots. However, uh, I'm not going to be doing any of that and I will be removing the heavy support. So we're adding in our two trucks, and then to round out the uh, like list, we're going to add in 15 grots here. It takes me a little bit to math it out. I go back and forth between maybe having a mech gun or maybe some rockets in the squads, but uh, at the end of the day, I decided to just opt for 15 grots. 
Now, don't you be sleeping on grots because, well, they are very cheap uh, when it comes to life, seeing as they're only toughness two and a six up armor save. Their silhouette is very hard to see, especially when it's behind like any line of sight or an intervening terrain. So they can be used to hold that backline objective or definitely score you uh, engage on all fronts by having a unit in your backfield. And don't forget the commandos. So I always bring at least two squads of commandos, both with knobs with power claws, just to have that potential for doing some damage from deep strike. But more often than not, they're just simply deploying scramblers or trying to get on objectives to mess with my opponent. And if that just happens to put them in terrain, then you're laughing seeing as they get an additional bonus to their saving throws for being in terrain. So in addition to them, I also have a uh, blitz Obama and a burn Obama. The burn Obama is a great castle breaker at the bottom of the list here. He, uh, he can fly in and just automatically explode with the flying and Edbutt stratagem, which deals flat three damage to any units nearby him. And that pairs well with the blitz Obama because it can also deal a considerable amount of mortal wounds with stratagem support. So flyers, buggies, and trucks, oh my. We have quite a bit of versatility in this list and diversity. Nothing's really high toughness, but that's something that you just have to accept when playing orcs. The biggest benefit that we have for our resilience is the shock jump dragsters. So on turn one, when the three of them redeploy through uh, the gyroscopic whirligig, one can use the temperamental whirligig stratagem from Saga of the Beast, and the other one can use the evil sun specific redeploy one, um, which allows you to move, or sorry, yeah, which allows you to move after you shoot. So what you're doing is you're deep striking three up and then you're sending two of them back into your own deployment zone for safety, which is an excellent way of just scoring secondaries and causing damage and then being out of line of sight. So while that's all going on, we also have our trucks, which are going to rip up, hold objectives, and the uh, infantry will pop out of them and hold. All the while, we've got our commandos and Gretchen doing various actions in order to provide us with more secondary scoring. And so there you have it. Now we have our orc list all ready to go for when we get to play again. So if you like what we've been doing here on the channel, hit like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments section below if you want to see more content like this regarding list creation. Down in the description below, you can find links to all our social media. So thanks for watching. We'll see you later.